Hey everybody, welcome to a special episode of Calling All Pappies. Oh, the camera right there, look at the camera. They're calling All Pappies. Hi. We've got Todd Pappy here live in the studio. Hello. And so while he's here, just like we used him in H RTV, ATV R acronyms uh, <laughs> a week or two ago, time, um, using him now, he's going to do five questions for Calling All Devs, our special edition of Calling All Pappies. How are you doing? Tom? Good. How are you Good. Doing, Tom? Uh, can, you, can you do this for me? Can you, can you just uh, oh. can you just try to... Try to put that on there. Look at this. Look at this. And, and, and say, and hell's coming with me. And hell's coming with me. It's, it looks like Kurt Russell in Tombstone, doesn't it? All right. Let's get right to it. We've got we've got questions for you. These are from the backers, voted on by the backers. Everything's the same like normal, except we're not going to bother with the Skype thing. We've got Todd here. Uh, your first question, right off the bat, says, will a solo player with high-quality NPC crew be able to compete with a skilled human crew? A very common question. This, 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 this has been a point of contention in the community for years, given, all, given that all other conditions are equal, like yeah. the same ship, the same weapons, the same components, all that stuff. NPC crew versus people crew, go. Yes. I, I mean, right now, the, the NPCs on some of the AI hit at 95 96%. And I don't even think that the most skilled human will be able to do that. So, uh, assuming that they are trained right and, and they are at that level, yeah, I, I, I see absolutely no problem in them being able to, uh, at least from a turret standpoint, mm -hmm. act that way. Now, when we're talking about going around and, and, and problem solving and saying, oh, hey, this thing needs to be repaired at that mm -hmm. time, those, that's where it's going to get a little bit trickier and it's going to take some time and finesse. Yeah, lots of programming and subceptions, subception systems, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, all the behaviors. All the wonderful behaviors. All the wonderful behaviors and with all the different variety of ships. Yeah. 121 different ships right now. Well, as, as, assuming that they know the layout, they have the nav points, they mm -hmm. understand how they, they need to go, then it's, it's actually interacting with that usable, switching it out or repairing it, and then, you know, running back to where they need to be. Right. All right. Cool. And of course, we've touched on this topic a couple of times in previous Calling All Devs. I'm certain this won't be the last time this topic comes up. But uh, but for those in the cheap seats, yes, our intention is that an NPC crew should be just as effective as a human crew. All things being equal. Of course, yeah. yep. uh, we all know in real life, in the Star City universe, in any situation, things are, all, are rarely always equal. Yeah, I, I mean, it'll depend on the ship. and But... I guess with anything in our game, we want to make sure that it's it, it, the player feels like, oh, I should have done this, not like, oh, this was super cheap. Yep. All right. Uh, your next question. Will we have props like a grapple or a jetpack to help us move through rough terrain or even wrecks? We've talked about having the EVA thrusters be able to, you know, kind of stop you in long falls. Uh, even not like super jumps or anything like that, but like a boosted jump, but nothing like uh, a crackdown or um, a just cause like grapple hook kind of thing. We haven't we haven't talked about that stuff yet. All right, I, I just mentioned you, you know falling forward and doing a superhero landing. You know. Yeah, one knee kind of thing, breaking yeah. your knee and then and then smacking your face into the ground. I just watched uh, I just watched Bad News Bear and uh, surf a big Benny's machine down through orbit. The other day, he rode a big Benny's machine <laughs> down to orbit. He, he had, uh, before he hit the ground, he wished he had a jetpack. Let me tell okay. you. All right, let's see. Uh, oh, here's a big one. What is the status of moving ships from a 100% chance of canned explosive death that kills everyone on board to rendering ships inoperable through physical or energy damage without all the colorful explosions? Uh, the, uh, as we've talked about before, uh, a non-death death state, if you will. So right now, EU vehicle team is working on misfires, the wear and tear, and getting those things working the way that they need to work. So if you fire, a, if you damage a power plant or you damage a cooler, then it has these type of misfires and it affects the way it works, which will affect other systems. Mm -hmm. So that is what they're working on right now. Um, and then there's the second aspect, which is basically getting the ships to have the physical entities inside of them. And that is something that um, the U.S. vehicle team or the EU vehicle team will do, will do in just a little bit. So um, because then at that point, we can actually switch out the items. We can transfer the damage from the external into the internal OC and then get that working. Gotcha. Is, is that that's related to uh, what, what we've heard? We've heard before the, the splitting of interior physics grids. 
It's it's the splitting of actual internal object containers. Okay. So um, the exterior object container does not talk with the internal object container right now. So once we get those two talking, then we can put those items on the inside and we can transfer the damage and make sure that everything is working properly. Awesome. Uh, let's see, next question. When can we expect tier zero of the survival mechanics to get added? Like food, water, <laughs> hygiene. This person's been to a video game convention before. Well, we do have showers and toilets. <laughs> yes, but when can we use them, Pappy? Uh, well, right now, uh, Jens is actually implementing character uh, character properties and so like thirst hunger mm -hmm. um drunkenness all these all these different properties that we want the characters to be able to have so once he implements that and once we actually get food working and so that you can eat you can drink mm -hmm. you can shower like each one of those i think would come on separately um but right now those are those are lower tier but we really need the the being able to trigger things on and off uh, from a player state mm -hmm. uh, for S42. Gotcha, so it sounds like he's uh, he's setting up all the hooks right now so that when the other game systems come online, they have something to attach into. It, exactly, so he's setting up the hooks and then it'll be up to the actor feature team to go through and make sure that you can actually use a shower, you can use a toilet and accordingly. All right, uh, and last question. Blazing through these things, man. Okay. Okay. On the old roadmap, the you know the old uh, A2 sheet with the bars, we uh, the, the one before 2018 when we, it was all done a Microsoft project. We even did a happy hour where we showed how we made it. Uh, players could it see what a was happy hour, huh? It wasn't a happy hour. I, I hated was, that thing. It, it was for some. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Now his real feelings come out. <laughs> All right. Uh, the players could see what was referred to as a down state that mm -hmm. was originally planned for September 2017. Are, have there been any developments around that specific mechanic? And, and if so, what can you tell us about it? I think they're referring to, you know, you, you shot, up, shot a person instead of just dying. They went down in an injured state and you being able to go and revive so people. So right now, um, we are working on knockdowns, knockbacks, kind of staggers. Um, so these are just kind of stepped up hit reactions. Uh, and this is something that we're looking to uh, implement, or we're, sorry, we're implementing right now, but we're looking to kind of roll out a little bit in the future. Uh, but this is our way of increasing our time to kill. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, if you're out in the PU, you don't want to get instantly popped, you know, when you flew out 30 minutes and then all of a sudden you get popped and, and you respawn and, and have to go through that again. So that's one of the first states and then from there there's the the, the medical aspect of it mm -hmm. so being able to revive yourself right now the med pen is a full heal um in the future it'll be a, a temporary heal and then you'll you'll still start deteriorating from there which then would introduce the medical gameplay regarding ships or uh somebody actually going and reviving you um hospitals those types of things gotcha uh, medical gameplay that that is that coming is soon, TM? Yeah, yes. It well, is. I mean it's. <laughs> I mean as as, me, as, as, as far that, that was... as far as um, as far as medical gameplay, uh -huh. there. Okay, so for the knockdowns, yes, that that is coming soon. Uh -huh. As far as the heal and um, the temporary heal versus the permanent heal, I would like that in sooner than later. Okay. Um, but as far as like the, the medical ships and being able to go and revive somebody and all of that stuff, that's when I think when we actually get those ships rolling out, that's when we'll introduce that, that yeah. type of gameplay. And yeah, we haven't had, we haven't had a medical ship in quite a while. Correct. It's just the Cutlass Red and the uh, Endeavor. Endeavor. Yeah. Yeah. Any new medical ships on the horizon? None. None at all? None. That I know Nothing of. Nothing anybody wants to tune in to on Friday, uh, July 20th? No. To, no. to, to RTV? You don't. You, uh, you uh, totally at, don't want to. At 9 a.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash star citizen? You totally don't want to turn tune in then. Definitely nothing there. No. Definitely nothing there. No. Uh, about, Not, about, nothing about, to about, see. About, about medical. About a, a new medical. Yes. Thing. Maybe. That was smooth. That was the smoothest. I, I've been doing this for almost four years now, sneaking in slide, things like that. And that was by far the smoothest we've ever done. <laughs> all right. We're going to take a break. Uh, we'll come back next week with part two of Calling All Pappies. Thank you so much, Todd. All right. Thank all right, you, Trent. Right, we'll see you next week with even more Todd take Pappy. Care. Bye.
Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.